this energy that is us, you know, we talk about it being viral, but why that's so important is it, it's picked up within our being. So our energetic beingness is now, you know, a mixture of the energy that we came with and the energy of the environments around us. And from that beingness is what you create your life with. This is what you create your relationships with. This is the, the energy and the stuff that you bring into your relationships into your work so beautiful and so bright it's like looking into the sun when you put them together <laughs> they've done movies mm -hmm. of the great gatsby in the past you know my boyfriend robert redford did yes Aver interestingly and johnny depp i mean really do your homework about these girls first mm -hmm. it's going she to be leo's first academy award you really? know and he's been overlooked quite a few times he's well there is not another show like this abc's done an amazing job the concept is in a one hour show, you see a year's worth of transformation. This is your first time here. What can you tell us so far and what do you hope to learn? Doug, tell me, why is it important to be involved with LP Magazine? I saw a lot of numbers today that supported our investment in LP Magazine. There's a lot of people who read it. There's a lot of decision makers who read it. So you're excited about the future of LP Magazine? I am, I'm super excited. You know, our customers uh, subscribe to the LP Magazine and I'm here just to get educated on the different pieces that they get from the magazine. From the Avengers movie, a little movie called The Avengers. Highest sales in recorded history this quarter yeah. at 1.83 billion. Right? If you're going to be like endlessly trapped in these patterns, um, cycles of relationships that aren't working. And even if you break up with someone, the next relationship's very, you know, similar or whatever is the patterns going on in your life. So all of these things transcend to the personal level. Or you can decide that, you know what? My life matters. It obviously matters to me. And this energy that I take on from the world around me and all the static and all the noise and all the interference, and all the toxins are affecting me. And this is what I'm creating my every day with. You know, I sit down to dinner with my family and this is what I'm bringing into my family environment, into that dinner. Or I sit down to do my work and I come into an office or into a cubicle with a hundred other people working on a floor, you know, whatever it is for you. And this is the energy that I'm bringing in. And now not only was energy something that I picked up and it was contagious to me, I am now also contagious to the energy I around was super me. super inspired. I watched it last night. So, it's <laughs> so congratulations to them. Seven pounds, 14 ounces. Mm -hmm. And she had a nice too. You'll right. remember in That's 2006, she went on Oprah a big reveal with her bikini. Do you remember that? Yes, she I was do. on the Oprah stage wearing I a bikini. Do. So this is something that how looks great on them from a higher angle and that's all that's going on. But that photo looks different it could be than Photoshop. the live cut. Maybe they her mother was killed by a drunk driver. And we don't really know this. Unless you've been there, it's hard to really understand the scale of this right, building. Right. It's my heart. I do, I do. <laughs> so <laughs> they're starting off in Ottawa. He's going to be a fabulous candidate, mm -hmm. um, hopefully if he runs. He's someone who sort of crosses partisan lines. Yeah. He's a liberal conservative. Yeah. He also is a household Martinez name. Martinez did an amazing job last night, and I actually did. His name is known around the world. overheard at lunch speaking about this dress. So here's a photo that we have on the screen for those at home. Just gorgeous. And so this is something that Kate really loved the look of this dress, and so she might be telling her designer. Wide receiver, yes. his partner Kim, they were fabulous. He yeah. has so much potential. Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> to, use, to use a rexism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, man. I'm stealing your line. Hello. Yeah, please do. That's, that's You know, I do a lot of media and I was on coast to coast a little bit ago, not, you know, maybe a week or so ago. And I received communication from a lot of different people, but this one stood out and I just wanted to share it with you and see what you think about it. Is there something here? Yeah, Nobody's that. changing. And yet the entire time, the consumer the vast population of planet Earth actually can make the difference. The consumer has always held the power and yet we're doing nothing about it. We're not demanding change. Because I think these things are chalked up to conspiracy and labeled incorrectly that they're just, they're so fringe, they're just so crazy they can't be true. You know, it just can't be that industry is poisoning us. It just can't be that we are causing all the cancers and these health issues. It just, it just can't be. And so there's a lot of ostriching and sticking heads in sand. So I think we need to shed some light. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do yeah. it.
<laughs> Let's mix it up. At first, I wasn't sure about this particle thing. Was there really something here to pursue, to investigate? And the more I think about it, I just can't let it go. The idea of corporations getting away with this and not telling us, the people, what we're buying, what we're consuming, what we're breathing, what we're drinking. I just got a hot tip from Penelope over at the Viral Enology Institute. She's in Florida. Uh, we're gonna meet up on scene. Now there is a chemical compound and it could be widespread. So we're gonna check out some locations and find out where it's actually coming from. Teams and scientists have been working on and they say it's gonna be some time. Wouldn't it be great if we had an alternative source that would push along our scientists and our medical experts in this information? I talk about this often with clients and they're, they're usually not aware that they're addicted and they don't look at it as you presented it. And it is like, it is very similar to an alcoholism. So I think the first thing is the awareness of it. And then they just have to take baby steps. You know, um, you know, I look at my life and I did a lot of kind of giant quantum leaps to get to where I am now. A lot of people are not that brave or they need to go a little bit slower. So if they can just start with awareness and Ooh. I would say meditation is extremely helpful. So when you're meditating, your um i like to say praying is asking and meditation is listening yes kind of listening for the answers you're opening up that you know to the divine consciousness within you your yeah. own higher self um but there's it. this there's this div dividing factor here where if you're on the outside of the res then you're looked at as um, maybe evil or wrong or 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 i don't know how do i put it the, the white man is evil, the white man is yeah. the devil, the white devil kind of thing. Well, you know, the settlers to this continent have had a very marred history that, you know, is not erased in the consciousness of the First Nations people, and they should remember that history. And so as a self-protection mechanism, they are very wary of outsiders. I think that if we could find a way to, to get rid of that barrier and... Us talking to them. Yeah. It's us get, talk because yeah. I have a similar family history. So as I said, my really? father. That's so my, cool. Yeah. My father was raised with First Nations peoples. You know, they, you know, they did call them white families. So I'll just repeat that. One of the very few white families in a very small town of a few hundred people. And the rest were indigenous. And you actually had to fly into this town by pontoon planes. It was a very isolated place. So he grew up there and has a love for the land and the environment. And he learned all of the wisdoms of the First Nations peoples. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hello. Hello. What's well, I just, a colleague and I are investigating some information on missing Indigenous women. And yeah. I know you know some things about that. So I just wanted to hear case in the paper this last uh, couple days ago. Wow. Yeah. What is, you know, it's, it's just, it's an unbelievable thing that this is going on so frequently and nobody really talks about it. I mean, it sounds like it's been in the paper. If it was a white woman, it would have been front news every day until they caught the guy and it would have been huge. But because they're invisible people, Nothing happened. Nothing changes. And it's been for years because I remember you telling oh, yeah. me about this years ago. For a long time. And are these indigenous women that are living on reservations, or it could be anybody? Uh, very seldom on the reservation. Uh, sometimes yes, they come off the reservation and go into town, and quite often get drunk and fall prey to to these predators. I saw a lot of that with my own eyes when I was there. They're destitute, absolutely destitute. It's a disaster. It's like a form of a quiet genocide, you know. A quiet genocide, powerful words. Do you think there's also Indigenous women falling into or being stolen, taken to the sex trafficking? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think it must factor in. I think that overall, we're in this perfect time in our human history where 
always a species that is evolving. And now we have the modern conveniences and extra time through technology to be able to look inwardly. So it's sort of this me generation. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's actually a natural part of our evolution to start looking introspectively. Um, you mentioned the United States. We tend to, at this time, this generation, want to question authority a lot. So whether that be um, religious leaders, whether that be the health industry that maybe has done us wrong, um, whether that be politics, we start to say, hmm, you know what, I want to start thinking for myself. I want to question authority. I want to look into this and find some information. And that is really the self and self-help. So there is a new energetic power at play, and it is rather different. Viral energy works by osmosis. My world book tour. Yay! Back, the newly married entertainment analyst Penelope Jean is here with much more on Hello. all of the dish. Congratulations, first Thank off, you. and you brought your lovely husband. I did bring Bert. my husband. Bert, hey, hey give us away. Split screen. <laughs> Blow a kiss. Mwah. Heart wife and everything. That's how we do it here Aww, on Low Country. Oh, you guys Live. are sweet. I love this. <laughs> right, exactly. I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Some of the folks that we're talking about. Do you wanted to play a game with I do, us? I okay, do. let's let's roll. You want to pop the first picture yeah. up? Okay, All right, yeah, Whoopi. people. Whoopi Goldberg. Did she graduate uh, high school? I mean, she's or really not? smart. She's on talk show, so I'm going to say yes. And she did not. Oh. No, okay. she did not. Uh, we have uh, another one, John. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, Alvin, so you know, he definitely graduated high school. He's articulate. He's a smart guy. Right. And he did not. Jim Carrey, Sean Connery, Tom Cruise. We have a picture Real? of Tom what? Cruise. I want to tell you a story about Tom Cruise and not graduating high school. He was going to be a Catholic priest. Huh. He was actually in the seminary in school to be a priest and then uh, went a different route. Yeah, he so went a much Nicole route. Kidman, uh, Marilyn Monroe, Debbie Moore. We have a long list, Char uh, Charlize Theron. Okay. We adore. These are smart people. So I think the moral of the story here is they you went in. You should focus on high school, but if you get <laughs> yeah. lucky enough to You're be You're limiting actor, your options, exactly. kids, if you don't finish high school. Yeah, for, for us, it's pretty simple. The, the magazine is just a wonderful educational tool for us. Um, it's something that our team can kind of rally around and, and um, take, you know, different points of view and have. What's the best part of this whole experience? What do you think? I think the fellowship. So, guys, that's it for the 14th annual LP Magazine meeting. We'd like to thank our sponsors, vendors, retailers, and all of those who made this event possible. Be sure to keep your eye out for everything new and exciting from LP Magazine. For Eye on LP, I'm Penelope Hayes. And this is the Director of Neuropathology. So this contact tells me that I don't like it when a person I had contact with, who I was in email communication with and was on the trail, suddenly dies. They're so, you know, enraptured in their drama that <laughs> they don't even want to get out of it. You know, you know what I'm yeah, talking about, yeah, right? Like yeah. they, they don't even want to. They enjoy talking about it so much that I think it's just habitual. And right. they've, you know, created such a pattern of, um, and really enjoyment too, because even if it's something bad, they're complaining about a boyfriend or complaining about a husband. They make the phone calls all the time to the best friend. And there's some, sense of enjoyment that they're getting out of that as well but it's holding them back i had you know my water with me and a pen and paper to write down ideas because i would often get ideas when i was sitting mm -hmm. meditating in the forest this one day mandy everything shifted i had been meditating that day and just you know meditating in terms of just sitting quietly but not doing anything in particular mm -hmm. not even trying to not think or not do anything, not scratch, you know, an itch. I was, you know, not worried about those things. I was just, you know, basically being in the presence of nature. And after having been there for four hours or more, a shift happened, an energy shift happened. Thank you. Again. We'll Good be right fun. back. Stay with us. What if the quality of your life is a product of the intentions and energy patterns of those people with whom you spend time with. The energy of your own deep inner intentions. Your outer environment, including the energy of the city, the tone of what you watch on television, and everything else to which you are exposed in your surroundings and interactions. Well, it is.